Hi, Clips Recap here. Today I'm gonna explain an early 20s scientific fiction movie titled Screamers. A movie about how war and science were used in the year 2078. Spoilers ahead. Kindly readjust and enjoy. Thank you. In the year 2078, a mining colony on planet Sirius 6b. For the last 50 years, the new economic bloc, the NEB Corporation has controlled mining operations throughout the known planets. 20 years ago, on Sirius 6b, the NEB discovered the solution to the world's energy crisis, Perinium. But they soon learned that mining Berinium unleashed lethal doses of radiation and pollution. The Alliance, a federation of mine workers and scientists, demanded the immediate end of mining operations. The NEB's response was to declare all-out war. The conflict between the NEB and the Alliance fueled a new Cold War on Earth, but so far the fighting has been confined to Sirius 6b. The NEB bombing raids has decimated the civilian population and devastated a once beautiful planet, after thousands were killed by clouds of the deadly Berinium radiation. Now in the tenth year of the war, the survivors on Sirius 6b are faced with a new threat beyond imagination. The scene opens with some miners playing games and smoking cigarettes when they see somebody stumbling close through their CCTV. The person coming was an NEB soldier, and the miners wonders what he was doing there alone without even trying to hide. The soldier suddenly stops, and some machines known as screamers with ear-splitting sharp noises and sharp blades employed below the sand starts chasing him. He shoot at them and lifts a cylinder for the miners to see before his hand is eventually chopped off by the screamers. His legs and head were eventually chopped off while the miners stood in their bunker watching. Lieutenant Chalk comes there and looks at the scene. They tell him that the soldier had something in his hand he wanted to show them. He then commands them to open the door for him and he goes out. The miners has a wristband that prevents screamers from attacking them. He goes out to the dead soldier's death site and picks the cylinder and goes to meet their leader, Joe Hendrickson, who was smoking and looking at a coin, and then hands him the cylinder. The cylinder is a Priority 7 document. He opens it, and it's a message from Richard Cooper, commander of the NEB Army to Joe asking for peace negotiation and requesting for two officers to come to the venue while assuring their safety. Chalk thinks that it may be a tactic to fool them Joe tells communications officer McDonald to send a message to Earth to ask for advice. She says that an urgent message from a commercial transport has been received asking for permission to land. Joe wants to know what the emergency was before granting them permission to land. They contact their commanding officer on Earth, Secretary Green, who tells them that the NEB have asked for a ceasefire so that they have the opportunity to bring peace to the world and also that Berinium has been found somewhere else in another planet called Triton 4. This time there are no signs of radioactivity or radiation from mining it. They eventually lose signal with Secretary Green due to the radioactivity. Joe and Chalk thinks that if war had broken loose on Earth, there would have had to be a ceasefire much sooner as they talk about their wives they left on Earth. Chalk asks Joe what plans do he have for the future. They receive a notification which tells them to smoke a red-colored cigarette to avoid the radiation. Immediately their bunker trembles and they run outside the bunker to find a crashed airship above them. They extinguish the fire and checks for survivors. Chalk takes Joe to a part of the airship and shows him a nuclear bomb reactor the travelers came with. Joe couldn't understand what's going on due to the fact that it's been long they saw a nuclear reactor. They eventually finds a survivor and tries taking him inside their bunker, but he runs back to the ship to get something he forgot. Immediately screamers started chasing him, but he's saved by Joe who blasts the screamer. Later on, Joe sermons the lone survivor to his office and asks him his name. He says he's Private Michael Jefferson and a first class. Jefferson sees the screamer Joe's working on and asks what it is. Joe explains to him that it is called a screamer and it was developed by the Alliance on Earth to help them neutralize the war on the ground here. He asks Joe how to know if the screamer is dead and then tries to touch it, but it winds its blades and it startled him. Jefferson asks Joe of his colleagues that he came there with, but is shocked as he's told that he's the only survivor. Chalk walks in and asks Jefferson what they were doing in Sirius 6B and what also was a nuclear reactor program for weapon manufacturing was doing in their airship. Jefferson answers in panic saying he wasn't aware of it. 
They asked him where were they headed to before they crashed, and he said they were going to Triton 4, and they asks why they were going there with a ship full of weapons, and he answers saying to invade, attack and extinguish the enemy. They ask him what enemy and he said the NEB and tells them that Perinium has been found there. They tell him that Secretary Green has already informed them about it, but he tells them that Secretary Green has been gone for two years. Joe tells him that they just communicated to Green the previous day, but Jefferson further explains that Green was arrested and eliminated by the Alliance Command two years ago, and then Joe dismisses him while he's still explaining. Joe believes Jefferson but also has his doubts. Chalk tries to tell him that Jefferson doesn't know any policy and is just a kid. They began arguing and Joe tells him that the Alliance has betrayed and abandoned them and he's going to the NEB command to find out the truth for himself. Chalk reminds him that the NEB command needs just two representative and he decides to take Jefferson with him. Chalk gives Jefferson a tab and tells him that screamers only attack living things by reading their pulse rate while handing him a gun. He bids his friend Joe goodbye as they embarked on their journey. While passing through a destroyed city, they hear some noise and immediately takes cover. A little orphan boy named David comes out of his hiding place clutching to his teddy bear. They go to meet him and ask him about his parents and how he survived the war in Screamers alone. He tells them that he hides and asks them if he could come with them. They give him food to eat and tells him that they'll be back in two days to take him with them. While leaving, Jefferson tells Joe that they can't just leave a kid behind, unwilling to abandon the defenseless child they bring the boy along with them. At night they are attacked by a reptilian screamer that Joe hasn't encountered before. Joe is left alarmed because their alliance tabs didn't protect them. At dawn, they continue their journey, and as they get closer to the NEB territory, two enemy soldiers, Becker and Ross, shoots David whose chest explodes in a shower of gears, bolts, wires, and smoke. Joe goes to check him out and is surprised and calls Jefferson, who eventually shoots off the head of David. Becker and Ross approaches the astonished Alliance men and further explains to them that David was a new Type 3 Screamer upgrade impersonating a human. They ask him why David didn't try to kill them, and he tells them that he was tagging them to take him along before eventually attacking them. Most of the NEB contingent has been wiped out by another David Screamer that a patrol unwittingly brought into the base. Becker, Ross, and a lady named Jessica are the only survivors. They go into the NEB command center and finds it empty and deserted. The Alliance men gets into a fight with Becker and Ross and was pointing guns at each other until Jessica stopped them from fighting. Joe gives her a cigarette as she hasn't smoked over a year. They exchange pleasantries. He asks her about the whereabouts of the NEB leader and she tells him there ain't one alive. He says if the NEB leader is still alive that he'll find him at all cost and Jessica agrees on helping him out. Becker confronts Jessica about taking Joe to the NEB control room. They all set out and goes to the NEB center. On their way they encounters rats in the tunnels and Ross is frightened by rats. While Becker makes jest of the situation. They get to the command room and finds pools of blood everywhere. Joe locates their mainframe computer luckily it still works. A reptilian screamer comes and they hide and watches it as it goes to the mainframe computer and inputs some data and goes away, but it eventually comes back and attacks them, but it is shot down by Ross. Joe instructs Jefferson to take everyone out of the control room and stays behind and learns the NEB truce offer was false, as well as the Alliance message from Earth, and also discovers that the screamers have evolved new versions on their own that are indistinguishable from humans and immune to Alliance tabs. Joe runs to go meet up with the rest of the squad chased by Davids. Becker becomes convinced that Ross is a screamer and kills him, only for him to discover that he was human. Jessica confronts him for killing Ross and tries to shoot him but couldn't. The four remaining survivors retreat to the Alliance base only to find out that the Davids have gained entrance into their bunker as well, killing Chalk and the entire Alliance workers. As dozens of Davids pour out of the bunker, they shoot at them while retreating. Joe fires a micro-nuclear missile into the bunker and kills the entire Davids. At dawn Jefferson rushes to the aid of Becker who was apparently injured in the blast and was screaming help me, help me continuously. But Becker's cry for help are a ruse, he's a type 2 screamer and he kills Jefferson. Joe avenges Jefferson and destroys Becker, 
leaving him and Jessica as the only remaining survivors. Now paranoid, Joe worries that Jessica could be a screamer as well. He slashes her hand and is relieved to see blood dripping from the wound. They locate an emergency escape shuttle. As they prep it for launch, they are attacked by another Becker that Joe destroys. With the shuttle now prepped, they discover it can carry only one person. Joe offers the shuttle to Jessica, but a second Jessica arrives, confirming that she is a screamer after all, and even more human-like. Joe resigns himself to death, but to his surprise, Jessica shields him, then sacrifices herself in battle with her lookalike. With her last breath, Jessica confesses her love for Joe. Joe departs for Earth on the escape shuttle with a single souvenir, the teddy bear carried by the original David. As the screen fades to black, the bear slowly begins to move on its own. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post on notification to watch more of our interesting videos. Thank you.